Hello guys, in this video we are going to talk about the activation functions. So there is one more problem with perceptron or with SVM also that they give a binary decision. So you can see that uh, say if suppose this is my classifier. So a perceptron or an SVM finds this line over here, a hyperplane or a line for 2D and uh, it gives a binary decision. If it is over here, it belongs to this class and if it is over here, the sample, it belongs to this class. So this is okay for uh, a problem like this, but then there are some problems where you so for the samples which are in uh, over here in the middle it is like these samples have like an equal chance of falling over here and over here right because they are quite in the middle so what one can suggest is instead of just giving a binary decision that uh, if it is over here then you make it to this class and if it is over here you make it to this class what one can do is you assign some real number to these uh, samples uh, some real numbers depending on your application and then let it go to the next uh, neuron or uh, let it go to the next level we are going to see what is this next level uh, in my next video so then things may be uh, okay so uh, instead of just uh, telling this particular sample as a 1 or minus 1 as in the case of perceptron what you can do is make this uh, let this particular uh, example have some output say 0. 0.6 and then we'll try to do something with this 0. 0.6 we'll do some other uh, thing in the, in the next videos and we will see how this is helpful so why is this pro so please understand the problem that we are getting a binary decision either it will be minus 1 or either it will be plus 1 so that is because of this sign function so we have seen the sign function in my perceptron rule so here in the perceptron video you may have seen that here we use the sign function so this is the this is also used in the SVM because that is what we do if it is positive then you make it to one class and if it is negative you make it to other class right. So let us see instead of this what else we can use. So we can use a sigmoidal function. So sigmoidal function looks something like this and uh, this is the so this is the graph graphical actual uh, sigmoidal function and uh, here you can see its derivative here you can see its derivative so here you can see that this takes values from uh, 0 to 1 it is taking values from 0 to 1 and it is half in the middle so here you can see that um, if suppose I draw a line like this so for, uh, for the samples that lie over here for them it is okay it is like uh, following like this just that uh, instead of minus 1 it is giving a 0 over here so because the range of this particular function is from 0 to 1 so you can see that for uh, say values uh, of samples greater than this line it is like more or less 1 and for less than uh, this line it is more or less 0 but over here you can see that the mapping uh, such sort of mapping is done over here so if a sample say it lies over here then it will be uh, it will have some 0 0.4 or something and if it lies somewhere over here it will have some 0 0.6 or something this is w transpose x axis so now in the feature space say this is my feature space x1 x2 so where x is a vector with x1, x2 and this is my feature space. So over here, uh, suppose that we have some value of omega. So this is that line omega and 
here I have samples and here I have samples. So now for uh, for samples lying on this line omega transpose x will be 0. So for these samples we have seen this in the perceptron or the SVM also that for these samples omega transpose x will be 0. And for other samples say for this sample omega transpose x will give me some some particular value it will give me this distance basically so there will be some some value that i will have right so what i am doing is i am mapping those values instead of mapping it to a sine function over here where it is just uh, binarily uh, dividing both the things both the classes here what i can do is for say a particular range so for this range, the these values will be in some real range. So that we can see over here. So if a sample is over here, so then I will I can give this sample a value of say 0.4, something like that. And if it lies over here, I can say put it 0.5 or something. So this depends on your application. So this particular line is can be treated as this line, and this line over here can be treated as this line. So this is what is the sigmoidal function. We will see why we use this. Uh, so this is used in neural networks non-linearity. So these are the functions which uh, give the non-linear uh, uh, feel to the neural networks. So now one can argue that why are we taking from 0 to 1? Because this was from minus 1 to 1. So we can also have a function which goes from minus 1 to 1 that is our tanh function so now this is like somewhat like sigmoidal but it is from minus 1 to 1 so we can use this so these uh, what functions do we take depends on the application depends on what neural network we are training so we can take any of them and you can see the derivative of tanh over here and you can see that over for these places see over here you can see that the derivative is tending to zero also for the sigmoidal case you can see that the derivative is tending to zero and derivatives are very important so uh, why are they important is uh, one of the reasons is gradient descent so the algorithm that we use to train uh, <clears throat> neural networks they need this particular derivative uh, of this particular thing to propagate the error backwards that is also what we are going to see in my next video so because of these things what happens there is a problem of vanishing gradients so we will not go into very much deep uh, for uh, deep in vanishing gradients for now but uh, keep this in mind so because the derivatives over here tend to zero so these can uh, have a little problem so what we can do is we can uh, use a relu function a rectified linear unit a relu function which is uh, like this so this is not a linear function you can see that uh, it is just uh, for the positive half it is a line but uh, for a negative half it is strictly zero it is defined like this max of zero comma x so here you can see that uh, this is this is also a non-linear function and this helps a lot in uh, neural networks. So now one can say but uh, the negatives are just getting equal to zero. So instead of this we can have a leaky ReLU sort of thing where uh, I am defining two lines which have different slopes. So this is necessarily x and this is some alpha x where alpha is very small value 0 0.01 to uh, consider the negative values a little bit or you can also take the exponential ReLU so in the exponential ReLU you can see that this is the same here you have an exponential function sitting over here so this can uh, take uh, pretty good uh, negative values also because yeah here it is just making it zero but then here it is giving some value to the negative also. So that was all for the activation function. I have uh, 
in the description below i have given a link uh, where uh, the these activation functions are nicely explained with their pros and cons please go through them and thank you so much for watching thank you